It's no secret that the stock market's down this year. The NASDAQ 100 is down 31.45% year to date, and the S&P 500 is down 23% year to date, putting both of these in bear market territory. And if you take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, it's down 19.12%. So because we're in this bear market and we're experiencing volatility and things are very crazy right now, one of the things that people often always think about are bonds. In the past, bonds have been a great place to store money when the stock market is essentially in a bear market or if there's a recession or if there's volatility in the market and it's not looking so good. Bonds have oftentimes been a great place to place money. On the other hand, when it comes to equities, a lot of people, when they think about, okay, I don't want to get out of equities. I want to stay in stocks, but I don't want to necessarily go into bonds. Well, then they start thinking about, okay, what asset classes inside of the stock market are the ones that are going to be the most resilient, that are going to have the least declines in bear markets, in recessionary periods, and we end up with utilities. So far, year-to-date utilities have actually been a pretty decent sector compared to what's going on right now in the market. Energy, of course, has been the big gainer so far year-to-date this year, but utilities is only down 1.16%. Now, compare this to things like the communication services sector, the technology sector, consumer cyclical, all down over 30%. And you can see utilities down just a percent. Comparatively, looks pretty dang good. So here on the left side of the screen, we have BND. And BND is the Vanguard Total Bond Market Index Fund ETF shares. Now, I believe that this is the biggest bond fund ETF that there is. So in terms of assets under management, I think this is the largest. I think this has the most money inside of it, which is why we're going with this. It's a very popular, well-known bond fund. And of course, it's a total bond fund. So it's got tons of different bonds in it. And then we have VPU. So VPU it's the Vanguard Utilities Index Fund ETF shares. One of the videos I did on the best sectors, so I went over the best sector ETFs for the utility sector, and I decided that VPU is my favorite one. So we're gonna use this as our utility sector ETF to figure out what's going on. So first off, we have expense ratios. They're both, they're both very cheap funds, 0.03% for BND and 0.10% for VPU. So you're really not paying a lot of money for these ETFs, so that is a good thing. In terms of yield, so these days the BND ETF is actually giving us decent yield. So we have distribution yield here of 2.23%, and then we have VPU having a 2.69%, so not too bad. However, when you look at the more short-term yield, so we're looking at a 30-day period, so most recent 30-day period, we're looking at 3.43% for BND and then VPU 2.73. So basically what's going on, bonds are starting to yield more and more because of what's going on with the Federal Reserve in, right, raising interest rates. And so as you can see here, it's reflecting in these the shorter 30-day yield going up, and meaning that uh, right now we're getting good yield on BND. Well, relatively speaking, depends on what you think a good yield is, but, and the other thing is it pays monthly, VPU paying quarterly. So, you know, if you're looking between these two ETFs, you might wanna, you know, make a decision if you care about having monthly income or if you care about having quarterly income, that's up to you. Of course, if you're reinvesting the yield, man, maybe it doesn't matter. Let's talk about BND first, okay? So BND has 17,264 holdings in it. Going down to the top 10 holdings, we can see that uh, U.S. Treasury notes are 0.62%, U.S. Treasury notes 0.53%, so it's all U.S. Treasury notes in the top. Now, if we go down and we take a look at credit ratings, this is an important part of bond funds. So you kind of want to know what the credit rating, average credit rating is for the fixed income security inside these ETFs. So if you go over here, you say AAA is the highest credit quality bond that you can get, and most of the bonds inside the portfolio are triple A. So you're getting, of course, a treasury is a triple A rated type of bond. So then you have double A, you have less double A. So this is more weighted on triple A, and then you have some A and triple B in there too. So you're getting more of the, uh, of course, the most of it is gonna be the very high quality bonds, but you're also getting a little bit of, maybe a little bit lower quality bonds, but that probably are gonna still yield decent amounts, and the reason you do this is mix it up a little bit. The higher quality bonds probably aren't paying as high of yields as these little lower quality. So triple B, probably gonna have a little bit of better uh, yielding bonds in there, 
than the triple a are however there's a little bit more risk in those in terms of vpu vpu has 68 different holdings inside the etf in terms of the top 10 holdings with vpu 54 percent of the holdings are inside the top 10 so a little bit less diversified let's say because there is quite a bit of weighting inside the top 10 here we have Nexter Energy, so that's ticker NEE. We have Duke Energy, we have Southern & Co. We have Dominion, we have Sempra, American Electric Power Company, we have Exelon, we have Excel Energy. Okay, so we, we have all of these different utilities type of uh, companies inside this thing. So you're getting pretty much larger companies with some mid-sized companies inside this portfolio. And the last thing I did want to go over, which is not inside this Charles Schwab screener that I'm looking at right here is we do want to know the uh, average duration of the bonds inside BND. So let's take a look at that real quick. So for BND, it looks like the average duration of the bond is 6.7 years, and then the average maturity is 8.9 years. So there you go with that in case that information is important to you. Now let's talk about the returns of these two ETFs. So here I have VPU versus BND, and what we're looking at is going back until April of 2007 because that's the furthest back we can go because that's the, the oldest of the youngest of the youngest ETFs in this. That's the furthest back these go. So we're looking at this, and what we're saying now is we want to look at, well, by the way, this is with dividends reinvested. So if you are going to distribute all of your yield, this would look different, right? But this is actually reinvesting the dividends. This is the growth of these two ETF. So here we have BND with 52.95% growth over this time period. And by the way, of course, this is pretty decent amount of time, maybe like uh, almost 15 years or 15 years, I, I'd say about that time amount. And so then we have up here 204% for BPU. Now, okay, maybe we uh, want to take a look and what and see what happened during the last recessionary period, which was, of course, 2008. So looking at that 2008, 2009 time period, let's talk about when the market essentially kind of fell out and then what happened with these two ETFs were the effects of these ETFs. So first off, we have this area starting in May of 2008. So as you're getting into the summertime, we're starting to see a fall in the different prices of the VPU ETF. So if we draw this down, we could see by the time we got around until October, VPU had lost 27%. So this was not necessarily resilient against the fall and what happened in 2008. And then if you go further, you're going to see around, let's say, the March time period of 2009, that's when this thing bottomed out, and it bottomed out more in the negative 37% area. So definitely quite a big fall for this ETF. Now... If we want to compare this to that kind of similar time period and what happened with BND, well, let's go back until May of 2008. And so between May of 2008 and let's say this first little fall here was, which was October of 2008, BND was only down negative 3.24%. So obviously, BND way more resilient to the price fall in 2008 during the Great Recession than. VPU was. And then if we go up, actually, we could see that by the next time period that we looked at before, so around the, uh, what time period was that? Around the, uh, let's, let's just call it March, uh, February, March of 2009, we're sitting here and we're actually up. So as you can see, during this really bad time period, BND actually did perform well. One thing I think we do need to consider right now is the environment that we're in versus the environment that we were in back then. And I wanna show you something to kind of help us understand this. So here we have the Fed target rate, and this is a, a long-term chart, it goes way back, but really what we're looking at here is what was happening in the 2008-2009 time period. And so as you can see, it's this little area here, and what's going on is basically rates are what what are they doing here right 5.25 percent and what are they doing well they're not going up right they're going down and they go down until about 2009 and then essentially the fed brings them like to essentially zero percent and it stays there for a prolonged period of time and now we're sitting here and we just had a jump in interest rates so what's going on basically is instead of interest rates being cut interest rates are increasing and what why does that matter because interest rates, so the interest rate of a bond is inversely correlated with the price of the bond. So when a interest rate goes down for a bond, the price of the bond actually goes up. And also the same thing happens in reverse. So if the interest rate goes up, the price of the bond goes down. So what's happening? 
interest rates rent interest rates are going up and bond prices have recently gone down. And we can see this right here, as you can see the price of the bonds are actually going down, right? And so of course this is reinvesting inside the ETF. The ETF has gone down, right, in price. So basically the deal is, is this gonna continue happening over time or have the interest rates risen so much at this point that it's not gonna have a big material effect going forward? Uh, part of the things to maybe to consider here would be, okay, what is your time horizon? Are you looking at this in like a one-year period? Are you looking at this in like a 10-year period? So depending on what you're looking at, if you think bond prices are going to keep going up from here and you're looking at a longer time period, BND might be okay. If you're looking at this over, let's say, a 12-month period, well, then there's a good chance that interest rates are going to continue to go up and maybe the price of BND could potentially keep going down. Now, of course, utilities at the same time probably will go down too. So here we are in a situation where you have to decide for yourself what is better for you to do. One last thing I wanna talk about is the risk. So the risk of these portfolios or the, let's say the volatility of these portfolios. So if we look here, we have Vanguard's total bond market ETF on the top, Vanguard's utilities ETF on the bottom. Okay, so let's talk first about what we're looking at here. So basically we're looking at if you invested $100,000 into this, uh, e these two ETFs, uh, you're going back until uh, 2007 like we were showing before. And by the way, this is actually distributing dividends or distributing yield in these. So um, essentially, if you distributed your yield over the time period, you're basically down uh, you know, $4,000 in uh, the bond fund. And then with the ETF, the utilities ETF, you're actually up $84,000. So that's, you know, I think that's interesting and good to know. But what I really wanted to show here is the standard deviation. And standard deviation is, let's call it the volatility of these two ETFs. And a lower standard deviation means a less volatile ETF. And as you can see, the Vanguard total bond market ETF, BND, is very, very much less volatile than the Vanguard utilities ETF, VPU. VPU being a 14.34% standard deviation. So it's a lot more volatile. Of course, you made more money by investing in utilities, but it is still volatile. I hope you found this interesting. At the end of the day, I know everyone has their own unique needs and what you're looking for right now with what's going on in the bear market. If you're a long-term investor, if you have a long time horizon, if you're a short-term investor, if you're scared about what's going on, if you don't want to sell all your money and you're looking at a place to put money right now, I hope that this at least helped kind of uh, give you some ideas. At the end of the day, you could always consider using both of these types of ETFs together in a portfolio. So anyway, if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to see more videos like this, and I have another video coming up on the end screen. Please watch that right now. Thanks everyone so much for watching. I do want to remind you, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is just my opinion. And let's face it, I am not right 100% of the time. So please do your own due diligence.